It can be a little uncomfortable at first talking to a gastroenterologist about all the symptoms that come with EPI. For example, nobody really likes to talk about diarrhea. You got non-specific traveler's diarrhea. Yeah, it was the street falafel. I'm almost positive. Hello and welcome to Downtown Browntown. Here are today's news and views. First, a developing story. There was a false alarm reported at a local shipyard. Stay tuned for the important details at the bottom of this broadcast. In other news today, a man rear-ended a Mitsubishi on the highway. When questioned by police, he said he had thought he had seen a mirage. Some sad news to report now. A lifetime member of the NRA lost his membership last week when he was accidentally shot to death. And now, an editorial. I was talking to a friend of mine who said he pulled a real pimp move the other day and then explained that he had sent flowers to his girlfriend at the restaurant she was dining at. I said, yeah, I pulled a real pimp move on my girlfriend a while back too. I drove her around in a van and then put her out in the street told her to go have sex with men for money, and then when they paid her, I put her back in the van and took the money. According to nationaldaycalendar.com, this past Saturday, the 15th of August, was National Relaxation Day, and coming up this Friday, the 21st, is National Brazilian Blowout Day. Organizers were quick to point out that this has to do with humidity and lots of hair, although this still fails to distinguish it from what I'm envisioning. Finally, a few more uh, events on, of interest on the docket. All next month, the state of Kentucky will be celebrating National Colostomy Bag Week. Representatives for the gathering are promising it will be an out-of-body experience. And an update on the developing story we reported earlier on the false alarm at the shipyard. A spokesperson for the shipyard said it was a false alarm. This is Downtown Browntown. Welcome to Downtown Browntown. Downtown Browntown is brought to you by the Beer Bro. It's for your beer, bro. Also brought to you by Buckler. At Buckler, we understand that there's a difference between drinking and driving and driving and drinking. Next time you drive and drink, drink a Buckler. Buckler, it's a good driving beer. All right, folks, we're uh, here today with Rajiv. Rajiv? Hey. Rajiv. I'm going to back up here. Break on. <laughs> All right, so you work for the CDC. That's right. What is the CDC? The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. We control disease and prevent disease. Wait, so it's the Center for Disease Control and, and Prevention, prevention. Yeah, but they didn't yeah. put the AP on there? No, nah, we decided not to. Just left, left the CDC. Off the AP. Yeah. Oh. But is it centers or center? Centers. So there's multiple centers there. Uh, How does that work? You know, each center's got like a specific disease category. Like we're HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, viral hepatitis, and STDs. And so there might be a national center for chronic disease. So they do chronic disease stuff. So they're kind of, it's a very vertical arrangement. What particular center do you work in? I work in the National Center for HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, viral hepatitis, and STDs. Okay. So, um, do all, a lot of the infectious, but not all of them. Like we don't do the, um, we don't do malaria or we do diarrheal diseases. You like don't that. do the diarrheal diseases? We don't do diarrheal diseases. So well, that fucks up the whole plan. <laughs> that does kind of fuck up the whole plan. Why, why did you not choose to do the diarrheal diseases? Why don't we do diarrheal diseases? Yeah. Wait, there's multiple diarrheal diseases? Does it have its own category? Um, Isn't diarrhea just the disease? Yeah, but I think there's a lot of causes of the diarrheal disease. Okay. But um, there is a thing such as the diarrheal diseases? I is this a thing that gets brought up in meetings? Well, it's a term that we need to address the diarrheal diseases. That is a term people bring up, but I can't, I don't remember if there's a specific center or a specific branch dedicated. I doubt there is because there's so many causes of diarrheal diseases that, um, 
it, isn't diarrheal diseases just a euphemism for diarrhea? Yeah. Well, is there any difference? Well, there's a lot of diseases that cause diarrhea. You're trying to get uh, out those different agents. Okay. Yeah. So depending on what agent causes, like hepatitis A causes diarrheal disease. But is that is hepatitis A a diarrheal disease? I don't think so. It's not classified. So like cholera. As such. Like cholera causes diarrhea, right? Okay. And what so, is cholera? Cholera is a bacteria, I believe. It's a big problem in Haiti right now because uh, the Nepalese UN workers after the um, big earthquake brought it there. Yep. Um, it's a bacterial disease causes uh, pretty bad diarrhea. Okay, so there are diseases that cause diarrhea, mm -hmm. but then there are specific diarrheal diseases. So does that mean they're not like dangerous enough to get into the regular category of like hepatitis? Is like own category? Yeah. But then, di but then, like, if they're like, are these like the minor league diseases that cause diarrhea? So I think so. I, I think they would be like, they would be even put onto a different like um, organization, maybe like water and sanitation or something, where they would just be focusing on that to get rid of diarrheal disease in general. But then, like. I'm sure cholera has its own like dedicated team. I did read, and it might have been from the CDC, and you say you might be able to correct this for me if it's wrong, but that diarrhea is like the number two cause of deaths among children across yeah, the yeah. world, and that 8,000 people die every day from diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? It's true. I think it is true. That's true. Diarrhea disease is a huge issue uh, in the developing world. Why is it such a big issue? Mainly among kids, because right. you just dehydrate, um, and then you, once you dehydrate, you're probably going to die. Diarrheal diseases uh, dehydrate the children. I think. But why is that happening? Why is there... Because diarrhea is not a natural thing, right? right. I mean, no, like, you should, when you're, you're having shit, diarrhea, you should not, you should be taking care of it somehow. Diar it's not normal. Diarrhea is like, you know, it's, it's, not, the, it's not the proper form. No. No, it's like if you it's like if you bought milk and it was curdled and spoiled and that was like baseline which would, would also cause diarrhea yeah that would definitely cause diarrhea I think although curdled milk isn't that just uh, some type of cheese or yogurt or something cheese curds cheese curds but cheese curds do cause diarrhea oh really no, or for cheese? people who are lactose no actually cheese constipates you doesn't but it I think if you're lactose intolerant right I don't know I think it does. We'll have to ask the Dairy Council. Yeah. Is there a Dairy Council? If there's a Center for Diarrheal Diseases, there must be a Dairy Council. I know there's a Dairy Queen. There is a Dairy Queen. And there's like the... She uh, might know. She might know. We'll, we'll call up Dairy Queen and ask yeah. if cheese is a, a you, laxative or a... Yeah. A constipator. Or, is that what it's called? A constipator? No, I don't think that's what it's called. It's called something else. What are the diarrheal diseases other than, you know, hepatitis? Cholera, dysentery. Dysentery causes diarrheal diseases. Um, you can also just get what they call non-specific traveler's diarrhea. Non-specific traveler's yeah. diarrhea. So it's not. They don't know the etiologic agent. Um, it's not like cholera. It's not dysentery, but some other non-specific. So I got it when I went to Egypt. I had non-specific traveler's this diarrhea. This you were just in Egypt. What two weeks ago? Uh, about like a month ago. Yeah. You got non-specific traveler's diarrhea. Yeah, it was the street falafel. I'm almost positive. It was uh, street so it wasn't non-specific. It was street falafel traveler's <laughs> diarrhea. But they would never say like this is street falafel. Doctor, diarrhea. I have had a bad case of street falafel <laughs> diarrhea. Right, right. They would just call it non-specific traveler's diarrhea. It sounds very specific. <laughs> yeah, it's non-specific in the. What is non? The, what does the non-specificity specify? Um, I think the the actual agent causing diarrhea. So it wasn't okay. the falafel. It was something in the falafel, but it's very like they right. wouldn't. It's not under like dysentery. It's not under cholera. It's just some bacteria that okay. our body's it's not. It's general doing. diarrhea. General non-specific traveler's diarrhea. Well, doesn't general and non-specific the same thing? Yeah, I guess so. Do you think there was ever a general in the war named General Diarrhea? <laughs> I hope so. So was the falafel that you ate really good? Um, yeah, the falafel in Egypt. And so eat. Was it fantastic? Was it worth the diarrhea? No, I don't know. On an economic so. spectrum? No, no. I, don't think, I, I spent probably two weeks. Whoa. Yeah, it was not specific. So <laughs> it's not specific. Exactly. I was taking all It was these during different... the day, it was during the night, it was... And, like, I tried everything, it just wasn't working. So eventually what happened was I ended up taking Imodium for, like, a three mm -hmm. or four days straight. Now, Imodium and... is, a, is a constipator, I guess you would call yeah, it. Yeah. Anti-diarrheal. 
Anti-diarrheal. That's yeah, what they call the it. The right word. So I was taking Imodium at the same time taking lots of yogurt, probiotics. Because you to, like the probiotic yogurt. Because I got to reculture. You right. Know, I have a non-specific bacteria causing this diarrhea, so I have to reculture. Mm-hmm. I have to reculture with some yogurt. So did that fix the problem? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. So the yogurt plus Imodium. Imodium just stopped everything up so it wasn't sh- shitting all the time. Right. Is there stops? Why are stops in here? You do. I don't think they do. Oh. Yeah. It's a good thing I stopped. <laughs> so ammonium stopped everything up, and I think that was really important because I think when I was putting new bacteria, I didn't just want them to rush out, I wanted them to stay in there for a while, reculture, take no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> now this brings up another topic that I want to ask you about. When you're talking about reculturing, yeah, are you familiar as uh, a person who works in medicine and yeah. disease control and disease prevention of a fecal transplant? Oh yeah. Hi, and welcome to this video. Uh, my name is Michael Hurst with uh, fecaltransplant.org, and today I want to discuss with you how to uh, do it yourself. I know a lot about fecal transplant. You know a lot about fecal transplant? Well, I know a decent amount. Okay. Some Would people you... call it poop shots. Poop shots? Poop shots. Huh. Now explain to me. Why would anyone on earth ever want to do this? Fecal transplant is, um, you take usually your significant others and or a closely related family member or someone who has the same diet as you. You take their poop and you, um... Maybe, I know, lubricate your anus uh, just uh, a little bit too, or just uh, a finger. Uh, nothing that a good Hollywood star hasn't done. Insert into someone's colon who probably has C. diff or some problem issues with... C. Uh, diff? What is C. diff? Um, plus, I've heard that before. Tritium diff? C. diff? I don't know. It's bacteria. I think. It's not diverticulitis, is it? No. What is diverticulitis? That's an inflammation of something. Something? <laughs> it's non specific? <laughs> I think it's something in your. Uh... So when you get a fecal transplant or a poop shot, yeah. A significant other or a, or a close family member? Why don't you just go to the same, like, the same Arby's that you eat at and get <laughs> someone else there? Yeah, I mean, that could be. I hope you're not eating Arby's every day. No. Uh, but like you know, if you're if you're living with someone or marry someone, you probably have a similar diet. Okay, to probably, you probably so, eat a lot of meals together. Yeah, yeah, and so you're trying to get the same um, bacteria or the cultures that they have growing in their stomach or in their gut, and put them to yours. But, okay. And they so walk me through the actual process. The actual process. Okay, that I don't know less about. You could be reading, you know, watching TV. All kinds of things. You can be hanging out with friends, which I actually did once or twice. Believe it or not. Then you can fly on your right side for a little bit. Um, Having not experienced I, it personally. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I want to ask you this. Can you... Is there any way that the fecal transplant is a suppository? In suppository form? I don't know if Because that is. would just be a very interesting operation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inserting someone else's feces into your anus yeah that seems like a, uh like a very counterintuitive measure because it's usually it's your own feces yeah, coming, coming out, out of your anus what it does is it goes through the rectum and it curves and it curves uh, sideways for the ascending colon it curves back again then it curves uh, again the other way i think so i think it is that's how they do it though so it's not orally I think they're going that way to try to develop that, but the problem is your stomach just dissolves everything, right? And you right. want the bacteria to get further down into your large bowel and your small bowel. Usually uh, diarrheal diseases are kind of, um, your large intestine is in charge of absorbing a lot of water. And when there's an issue with the large bowel, you're absorbing less water, shit's moving through faster. It's usually not the stomach. It's the bowel. Bowel. By bowel, do you mean intestine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, intestine. They have the small bowel. Intestines working up to large bowel and small bowel. Large bowel is right after the stomach, and usually involved with breaking down nutrients and absorbing them. And the large bowel, I think, is mainly for absorbing water. I can't. I think you don't take it orally because it doesn't you break it down in the stomach. I okay. Think. I could be not wrong at all. About that. You think they make gummy chews? They should. Flintstones. Flintstone. Fecal. Fecal transplant. Transplant pills. <laughs> they should though. Maybe that's something you could get into. Yeah, I could do I think this that. AC is just blowing hot air. Okay, let's turn the AC off. <laughs> it's just blowing hot air. Right? Well, it is conditioning the air. 
I guess so. Can Come I on, open please. this? Is that yeah? Open that. Open the window. The crank windows. And I have to admit that when I first started talking about things like diarrhea and gastrointestinal gas, I was um, blushing probably quite profusely. But um, we have a good relationship. So did they warn you when you went to Egypt not to eat a burrito or a falafel? They told me not to eat street falafel, but everyone said, everyone else said you have to eat street falafel. Huh. It tastes so good, so of course right. I'm going to eat it. So you ate it. And ate then it. you got non-specific travelers started. Yep, three days straight. Three days right after, I mean, and I had it for probably two weeks straight. Two weeks off and on. Two weeks straight diarrhea, just like, not always Every that. day? Yeah, but it was like... Whatever yeah, I would diarrhea. eat would go right through me. <laughs> Crazy diarrhea. Diseases. Crazy diarrhea diseases. Yeah. As opposed to the very tame, the tan and moderate. Like I had diarrhea. tame, probably. Tame like, diarrhea. See, diarrhea doesn't seem like it is uh, open to like oh, you know, a spectrum. I think it is. Really? Very much. Yeah. In terms of you frequency. know duration, frequency, I would but say actually frequency. consistency. Consist. So diarrhea I have, is pretty much diarrhea. No, consistency is no? also definitely. Yeah, I've had like diarrhea, you know, like. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Like, I've had pee out of. Shit pissing. Shit pissing. Is that a term? Yeah. <laughs> I don't wow. know if it's clinical. Oh, I think it could be. Liquid diarrhea. It was literally shit pissing, though. Whereas before yeah. I've had before, like, some bad Indian food, and I'm just. Just one. one the runs. The runs, yeah. Or it's kind of chunky. But not it quite. kind of spatters out of you. Yeah. Not it looks quite like the, solid. Not quite solid. Yeah. Okay. This not is the worst solid. stop sign that I've ever put in. This one? Yeah. You don't like it? I don't like this one. Why not? I didn't like this one because they put this this little oh, planter out there. Oh. And I don't understand it. I guess I can go. Yeah. Is that Roberts? So, yeah. Okay, it's Dan Roberts. Hold on. Where's my fucking sweater? I got it. Yeah? yeah. How you doing? Good. Go, I gotta go? You look great. Thanks. We're doing an episode of Downtown Brown Town. Right now? You gotta come on the show, yeah. Hey, have you ever had diarrhea? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Uh, I'll talk to you later. All right. <laughs> that was Dan Roberts. It just seems to me that something as basic as diarrhea, like the fact that when you poop, what's coming out of you isn't the correct thing. Mm -hmm seems uh, that, that a problem so basic could be such like a huge epidemic and could be like killing oh, people. yeah. I mean... Diarrhea. So like why isn't there more... Okay, here's the question I want to ask you. Here's the philosophical uh, end of it. Yeah. Do you think that the taboo surrounding feces or the fact that we don't like to talk about feces or the fact that whenever we like excrete our feces mm -hmm. we kind of... It's like this very sheltered private matter. Right. Or even, you know, in a more just day-to-day -day topic isn't really, you know, it's not the first thing that you talk to someone about. Right. But well, yet it's a very important thing, and it's very indicative of your overall health is yeah. how you're shitting, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, like, do you think that there's any correlation between the taboo surrounding feces and the fact that there's not a lot being done in global health about this like really devastating issue. Yeah, it's a very complicated and multifaceted issue, I think. It's the because there's one, there's so many causes of diarrhea. Two, it is, there is some sort of stigma associated with forcing other people to, you know, you're just, you're just going out in their backyard and taking a poop. That's mm -hmm. how disease is transmitted. Usually through diarrheal disease, right? Mm -hmm. You just shut in the backyard and it gets to the water source contaminated and then someone else gets sick and then eventually the child gets sick and then the child dies. So that's an issue is one forcing other people um, to do something they're not used to doing, shooting in a toilet. Like, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't they're getting get toilet paper to them, getting um, this crazy sewer system in to help transport it in a on a safe way every way. Um, to have that infrastructure is a lot of money. I think it generally just reflects the magnitude of the problem reflects, you know, it affects people who are usually poor, mm -hmm. not usually people who are well off mm -hmm. at these systems, and it's a very neglected sort of area of global health. But is there a lot of, because there's 
poverty in this country, and maybe it's a sure. relative poverty, sure. but is there a huge dysentery or non-specific no. diarrhea problem in this country? Are people dying from diarrhea in this country? No, but I would to call any, to the, any you know serious extent. No, no, but I would call the infrastructure um, in the U.S. to sort of handle the diarrheal disease, water, and sanitation is a public good, right? Right. That reflects the overall overall. We as a country have decided that we don't want people dying from yeah shitting uncontrollably. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing, absolutely. A lot of the countries who suffer from diarrhea also went up and colonized for a long time. Yeah. Here's that issue. So they could they colonized them, enslaved them, and they left, right? Right. So they have this, um, they left everyone pretty much poor without anything. And then you have this huge power gap, and there's a lot of corruption that followed. Not like every country has its corruption, right? Sure. To different varying degrees. But, um, so the countries that have a lot of diarrhea, they've also had like years of um, years of being uh, controlled by some other country, <laughs> essentially, right? Huh. Well, it seems then that it would be the responsibility of these nations who have meddled in these territories to yeah, meddled and muddled to somehow address that that yeah. infrastructure gap. Yeah, yeah. Infrastructure um, is the biggest part of, I think, is a huge part of water and sanitation. That would be the underlying uh, fix, the, the, the major fix right. of uh, diarrheal diseases. Is the CDC advocating, is there an outreach program where you go to these countries where this problem is happening and you say, look, you can't shit in your backyard anymore because yeah. it's running into the water and you're literally drinking your own shit. Yeah. And then you're shitting out your own drink. Right, right. Yeah, and um, I hope they don't say it like that, but I think that's the right. essential message, sure. though. Sure, in so many words. Yeah, yeah, in so many words. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of programs that, like, focus on education. That would be the education component, but mm -hmm. it's also just getting the infrastructure in there. I think... Um, it's a great company, organization, um, Engineers Without Borders, a lot mm -hmm. like the uh, Doctors Without Borders, mm -hmm. but they go into a lot of rural and impoverished com communities and sort of self set, help set up these um, the infrastructure for water and sanitation. But there has been quite a lot in sort of the field of reinventing the toilet. Oh, yeah. Because it's kind of a, you know. It's going down the shitter. <laughs> no pun intended. They woke up in the morning and said, you know what? what what's your thought on the bidet? I like the bidet. I, I think that there's... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it would make sense, you know, um, if you talk to, to Stix at all, he's a big advocate, as are a lot of people, of the moist towelette wipe. Oh, yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. kind of like serving the same purpose as a bidet. It's addressing the area with moisture. yeah. And I think. Do you, do you wonder how clean do you think you, everything is once you put a bidet versus a moist towelette? Um, I actually think the moist towelette is probably a little better because yeah. with the bidet you're just kind of splashing water on it. Right. And well, a lot I of times it doesn't have really, realistically, it doesn't have the propulsion to probably yeah. clear away some of the material that's on there, especially with, uh, you know, the the addition of air. Yeah, you uh, kind of need a jet stream. Process. Really. You kind of need a jet stream. Or a scrubber. But or a scrubber. You, what you really need is a big, you know, <laughs> bristle brush and a constant, you know, stream 400 water. PSI stream of water. It's kind of like when you go to the dentist, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, well, you know, I'm, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if there's a market for this, but, you know, there's a manicure and a pedicure. I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, started taking better care of our anuses yeah. because I think uh, hemorrhoids is a huge problem oh huge yeah and that's just dingleberries too dingleberries well dingleberries and hemorrhoids are very related yeah one yeah. Well, I would say dingleberries are causal to hemorrhoids yeah and uh, yeah. you know by not keeping that area clean you're opening yourself up no pun intended to all sorts of uh, you know, potential consequences so a dingleberry it should be the first indication that you should get checked out, maybe. Well, no, a dingleberry is just, you know, a dingleberry can be taken care of very easily. Right. But there are get... various methods. Right. Um, but if you... Do you have a preferred? I go back to front. Uh-huh. Lately. Yeah. If I feel like 
I have an in, I have an inclination that I haven't quite gotten everything out. Yeah. There's a little bit kind of, um, you know, kind of tiptoeing right on that fence of coming out and kind of being stuck on the end there. Yep. A lot of times, if you go, I find that if you go back to front, there's less of a chance. Is that straight? Yeah. There's less of a chance of smearing. Right. Because you're kind of coming down that channel. Do you stop yeah, no, yeah, stop stop something? No, he doesn't stop something. I don't understand this. Um, so when you're coming down that channel, if you, if you look at the just the the oh, you get geometry this? of yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You you carve right down that channel, mm -hmm. and then you go into the area, and you kind of scoop up whatever's there. Right. Because if you try to go backwards, just the angle of your hand. It is, it's just gonna put, it's, it's gonna it's gonna plow everything you know right rather than scoop everything you want to scoop you want to scoop because when you scoop. plow yeah that's it's gonna smear that's and smear. smear is probably like the last word you want to hear when you're talking about uh, cleaning yeah cleaning down there after an episode so you mentioned sticks he's a regular on the show is that right yeah he's actually my last guest and yeah. he uh, the Brown Hour, the podcast that we have yeah. together, is me and him. Okay. So, um, you know what I heard he does? What's that? He's, he's a stander. Not he is everyone's a How did a you hear that he's a stander? You know, he was... We were talking That's funny that it. he's known as a stander. <laughs> yeah, and you no, stand up to white, but, too. Uh, so you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I stand, stand up, up to white. To white? Okay. Yeah, everything I can, get, weird. I can every, get behind that a little bit. Every, yeah. Standing everything up to behind, white is, but you have like the trifecta. <laughs> everything about your 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 persona, your your like you know, your pooping, your I'm profile, your pooping profile. Way, that, you're, that you're like accusing, not even accusing me. But no, you're I'm just, not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying <laughs> I, I, you shouldn't be offended. I'm not saying it's wrong. No, I'm just saying that that. Everything fits. You, you have a very defined profile of, of you know, pooping behavior. You know, because like some, like everyone has, and maybe I'm just the other way. You know, maybe I'm the one who's the the OCD super clean, right? Guy, and which is well, not I think to say, actually my goal to is to get more better. clean than you are because I think I have more stuff. Or actually, just to, to uh, a flaw in your your profile of me is that <laughs> you say that I'm. It's a lot of profiling going on. <laughs> yeah, you say that I'm uh, uh, kind of primitive in my methods, but I also am a huge supporter of the, the baby moist wipes. Wipe. Yeah. Mm. Well, you've made uh. leaps and bounds in your civility. <laughs> 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 the moist wipes, I applaud you for. I mean, that was a real breakthrough, yep. and I give you all the credit for it. I'm not trying to, you know, demean you. It's just very interesting to me. He would. T I think when I when I first figured out. He he was a stander and I was a sitter. He was like, that's crazy. No one sits. But apparently everyone sits, right? I sit. Oh. Yeah, I sit. Well, but, you know, of course, there is the issue of getting up and over. That really looks like Pete. It does look Pete like Pete, yeah. Um, I sit, but I kind of, like, I kind of I kind of oh, lean I angle, off to one. Yeah, 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 I angle. Yeah. Especially if I'm going back to front. But he's straight standing and... He's straight, and you know the other thing he does. That I don't know if he told you is he wads. I need to get back to this this wadding though. Yeah, I think because how does it work? You just oh, you just kind of you ask your. Should we get a roll of toilet <laughs> paper yeah, do, do, out? Do, do, yeah, yeah, do like, you want to go get some toilet paper? Yeah, let's get. Yeah, some I actually I'll would be, like to right see back. how this works. All right. Yeah, well, because he, I assume that you're like just. Taking like half the roll, putting it in a ball, and just like <laughs> yeah, right? plug it whole. Just take one huge roll. <laughs> See, I'm not the only one. But no, Zach says that you bunch it up and then you just pinch it at the bottom, and then you so you have this little part that you're pinching, and then you have like a big like blooming yeah, onion on top. So yeah, this is. I, all right, yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you the. I mean, we, we don't I'm sure need the full. We don't need to demonstrate it. It has perforated lines. <laughs> yeah, for the, for the you fold just, along. Like yeah, this. like that. Like this. Like this. Oh, what see. is that? That's how people How do you wipe then? <laughs> Fold it, fold it. Hold, 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 hold your hand like this. Get it out. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in <laughs> surface, surface area. area. Look at the surface area difference there. There's no, yeah, but, there's no but way. How big that is your butthole though? What do you mean? <laughs> he was. He's a water and a standard. Oh, I fold. A very rare combination. Are you a folder? Oh, I fold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I take. Oh, there's there's Will and. Uh, yeah, they're about big. I wonder if they texted us. Let's just follow him and go to Stewart's. Yeah.
Oh, there they are. Yeah, hey, let's let's go to Stewart's. Let's go to Stewart's. All right. <laughs> How long has it been? Uh, a good conversation. It's an hour, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. No oh, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a standard, which is standard it's, it's and a, a water. A standard and a water. It's, it's just all personal a very, preference. Yeah. It is personal preference. It's just a very rare combination. Have you ever been shit on by a bird? Yes. Yeah, that's common. Common occurrence. And I've. Uh, it's good luck, is what they say. I've heard that. I've had pretty good luck. I've gotten. I've gotten feces on my hand before. Yeah. That's happened. I think that happened. Both from luck. poking through. Yeah. If there's wetness there. Yeah. You'll poke through. Or if you're you're you just didn't you didn't fold enough sheets. I guess um, that's why he goes with the wad, right? But the wad also gets messy. But I tried the wad, and it's like it's like. I can't do it. I just I don't understand. He tried to explain it to me on the brown hour. We had a whole conversation about. Did this. you guys bring toilet paper as a test? We actually, yeah. Well, we actually brought it, yeah, as a demonstration, demonstration. to demonstrate to yeah, each other yeah. the various methods. It was kind of like a cultural exchange, you know. Yeah. It was nice. No but way. How big is your butthole, though? What do you mean? <laughs> You're telling me you've never. We're just talking about how sometimes yeah, but, you have lack of accuracy. But, but I mean, <laughs> you're. How many hands sure are you going in there, or fingers are you going in with? I go like with? this. I go like you know, straight you're going away. In with the only just thing you have to small... be careful of is the thumb. <laughs> so, yeah, oh, that's you why you don't. You, like right your thumb's here? covered. Yeah, yeah. But you can yeah, go everything's sideways Everything's covered too. here. Yeah. And, and except and, your whole hand. So you're a folder. I'm a folder. Yeah. Um, how, how many, how many sheets usually? Depends, uh, on, the brand, depends on the brand. It depends on yeah. Depends on the brand. Depends on the ply. Yep. And what do you usually get for yourself? You know, I get the really thin stuff and this is another know. thing that I advocate no people are like oh it's sandpaper or yada yada but another thing that you want when you're wiping is traction and a lot yeah. of times that really soft stuff it's really padded when you go to wipe it it'll just the first the first contact it makes with with the feces it sticks to it and then you kind of got this rolling effect yeah it's rolling and I like to have a little grit on it yeah. I like to have some traction yeah. So I just go right through there. Right. So you have less wipes too. I imagine, right? Well, if you have a smaller, if you have a thinner ply paper, you usually use a few more sheets. Yeah. And I don't know about less wipes. I, to be honest with you, I think the biggest thing about wiping is diet. Diet. I think I think yeah. red meat creates the stickiest, smeariest, darkest, yeah. nastiest. You know, uh, turds. You, and I try to stay away from it. Yeah. So what you eat definitely affects all the uh, organisms or the your microbiome. Microbiome. Is that what they call that? What's that? The microbiome. I don't know. So that's like the that's what they call the, what is it? Or, it's another organ there. I have to just call it the bacteria that live in your gut. Is affected it by. That's what they're calling it now. In New York, I read an article the other day. Huh. Yeah. Um, Wait. There's a separate organ, and what does it do? They call it the, it's a microbiome, the bacteria in your gut. Because what you eat really affects what kind of bacteria grows in your gut, and that will affect the poop, right? Well, your poop is the bacteria in your gut. I mean, poop's in you before it comes out of you, right? It poop's lives in, in there. Yeah, yeah. There's poop, there's logs of poop yeah, in this yeah, right yeah. now. Um, but like, that's another organ, is what they're calling it. They're calling it... Your poop inside you? The bacteria. Oh, in yeah. the bacteria in the poop. Right. Right. So just like any other heart health or yeah. lung health, you want to have all diet. healthy bacteria. All right. Last question. Yeah. You know how you can be on your driver's license, you can sign up to be like uh, an organ donor. Yeah. Do you think we'll see a day where, where you, you can, can sign up to be a fecal donor? I think it should happen sooner rather than later. There's a lot of people that have C diff. <laughs> Thanks, Rajiv. Absolutely. Good talking to you. This is downtown Brown Town.
Well, cause you're wiping your chick and your chick and you're wiping your wiping your chick just to see. Yeah, you're wiping your chick and your chick and you're wiping your wiping your chick to clean.